one of the first ever Andrew Dab solo written episodes. This is a very back and forth episode. I want to kill a hellhound and not die. How about you? Ooh, that's a hot mug guy. Hey guys, this is my review for Trial and Error, episode 14 of Supernatural Season 8. And this is the first episode of the trials. Now, admittedly going through this season, the first half has been a lot of Sam and Dean reconciling, Benny's involvement, the story with Amelia, and then kind of figuring out what they can do with Kevin and the tablet, laying down the establishing order to fix what had been the mess of season seven. Now we are introduced to the end game of the season being closing the gates of hell. And to do so is a series of trials, the first being kill a hellhound and bathe in its blood. Now this episode is written entirely by Andrew Dab, and it both shows in good and bad spaces. The humor is all fucking over the place. Some jokes are good, some jokes are okay, some jokes are awful. Dean is also all over the place. Between his interest in cooking, yeah, wow, you're welcome, to like 6,000 tomatoes, did you know that there are like 6,000 kinds of tomatoes, to his monologue, his incredibly dramatic monologue to Sam about how he has to go and do this trial by himself. You, I'm a grunt, damn, that you see a way out. You see a light at the end of this ugly ass tunnel. I don't, that I'm gonna die with a gun in my hand. I get the sentiment behind it, but it's just a bit overdramatic that he feels that Sam is actually the one who had a life. He saw that, he made him go away from it, he wants to right that wrong by taking that sacrifice. And then when Sam has the monologue at the end saying, how oh, Dean, you're a great hunter and you know the Lord. You have friends up here, family. Or hell, you even got your own room now. Giving him definitely some brownie points. You have friends. The sentiment of these monologues is sound, but the way they're delivered is just so wordy and overdramatic. It just bleeds with early dab writing, but it's not awful. Not in some spots. Admittedly, there are some spots that are just really awkward that then lead into a further explanation, and that is the family and the associates of the people who are hunted by hellhounds that all did a deal in some way with Crowley, who just so happened to not mention what was going to happen to us instead of them in 10 years. Some of them have things to do with love, other with success, others with just keeping them or family afloat and alive. And that is who the handler of the farm has. A, that's her story. Her sudden comeuppance onto Dean is like, okay, are we playing into the normal supernatural kind of whimsical humor? Impressed. I do like a man who can handle this meat. I think you're really hot. You want to go to my room and have sex? What? Like, oh no, no, she just thinks she's gonna die tonight, so she might as well have a good time. I like bits of this episode. I like the idea of the trial. I do find poor Kevin is going like, is he getting three hours of sleep a night? Was I doing that math right? <laughs> that poor guy is going to hell and Sam is trying to give him these notes because he's, he feels guilt. Like, he looks at Kevin and he should feel guilty. So he's trying to give him some notes about how to do better with it. But onto the trial, I like the first one. I think that the idea of going after a hellhound and finally seeing these things after all of the years of the very, very creative, invisible, because we don't have the budget to show them effects. I liked what the effect was. It kind of made it look like more of a panther, in my opinion. I also liked what happened to Dean's face when he got all demented because of the hellhound's atmosphere and presence. I like then too the surprise that you really think Dean's so gung-ho and then for some reason he just turns around. Uh, for some reason. You're waiting for Come and get it! And then he gets attacked and then Sam kills it and now we know the stakes. We now know what's going on. I like how earlier during Dean's monologue how he pointed out that we know these things don't go well this is different how because of the three trials crap we've been down roads like this before man we both know where this ends one of us dies or worse and we already have that premonition for sam but we don't know the exact extent of it other than his arm getting all glowy the trial ends with a few casualties but the brothers are able to do the first bit trial and error 
has a lot of errors, but it also has some good parts to it. Is it as significantly interesting and compelling as I thought it was when I first watched it? No. I thought that it was much cooler the first time I watched this episode because of what happens at the end of the episode. But everything that leads up to it is just so kind of cornball and typical dab. This is a reach for dab. Like, this is dipping almost into 15 territory in terms of the silliness of it. I can. You want to know why? Because it's what I do. And buddy, I'm the best. But it's restrained because of Carver. So take it, I guess, as you will. In the end, I'm going to give Trial and Error a... 4 out of 7. I almost want to give it a 5. I almost do, but I just can't stand how many times I cringed during this episode. That that really is the one that took it away from me. I got almost all the way to the end until Sam's monologue. I'm like, no, no, that's going down to a 4. At least there's a positive, though. But those are my thoughts about this episode. Let's see what you guys had to say. The episode is known for the intense action and emotional moments. It showcases the bond between Sam and Dean as they face dangerous challenges together. The episode also introduces significant plot developments, including the potential consequences of the trials and the impact they have on Sam's health. Additionally, it gives the viewers a glimpse into the extensive mythology and lore of the series. I'll give you that. Absolutely it does. Definitely one of my favorite episodes of the season. They certainly do delve into Sam's psyche while undergoing the trials, which I liked. Something I liked. The same for, Sam, for Dean, as we do end up seeing him going down a dark path at the end of the season, and it continues going even deeper in Season 9 with taking on the Mark of Cain to make up for what happens to Sam. I also love the bunker introduction and even said that they had their own Hogwarts and later they would find the dungeon and they would have their own chamber of secrets. I tossed out one of those in the later in the series. Something I am noticing is that a lot of people like what this episode implements and if you're wondering why I was a little bit negative is because I wasn't like I understood those elements. I was reviewing the episode as it was but yes I do realize that this episode does have some big ramifications as the show would go on trial and error is in my opinion one of the best episodes of the season as it showcase as it shows the first trial to close the gates of hell and sam being the one who takes the trial on something very good for me and the dialogue with dean before he takes the trial made me sad especially after watching the series finale see that's what i mean that that kind of furthers my point the episode mainly focuses on the first trial which involves obtaining the heart of a hellhound oh, you mean the blood of a hellhound Stan sam and dean investigate mysterious deaths and track down they face various challenges they ultimately discover that annie is responsible for summoning the hellhound due to a past deal together with annie the brothers confront the hellhound to manage to kill it retrieving its heart yeah i don't think the heart thing <laughs> it was the blood the, the episode highlights the strong bonds between the Winchesters and their determination to finish the trials despite the potential risks involved. However, it also raises concern about the potential consequences and totals of the trials. And Trial is an action-packed episode of Supernatural Challenge by the brothers facing evil. This is Supernatural's Yellowstone. Actually, yeah, I kind of agree with that. It's nice for the show to come back to the main plot of the season 12 episodes later. <laughs> Granted, I'm okay with that, and I will explain later in the season review. It's nice to see Kevin, who is really going through a lot of mental exhaustion. It's brutally honest look at how horrible rich people can be. One of the things I loved about Supernatural is it's keeping the appearance of the Hellhounds a mystery. I very much agree with that. Their appearance in this episode is fine, but it doesn't terrify me like season three. However, this episode does give me more clarity about how Sam was always meant to live out his life, and Dean w would go out dying uh, on a hunt. The episode is overall good for having Sam begin the trials opposed to Dean. Yeah, the idea that your imagination is always better of what something is than actually seeing it will 100% always work. Um, letting you imagine what it is is so much more terrifying than actually showing you what it is. I really enjoyed this episode. Both Sam and Dean shine here, and I enjoyed seeing Dean happy setting up his bedroom. After so many years, he finally has his own room. I really enjoyed seeing uh, Tamara Braun here, as I absolutely loved her, and Carly in General Hospital. Oh, that makes sense. Um, quite interesting. I totally understand why she made the deal with Crowley. Not surprised that she didn't tell her what would happen as a typical move of him. I get why Dean is determined to do the trials and not what wants Sam to get involved, once again being the protective brother. That was something I was kind of like, eh, about with... Crowley not saying because they usually just say something like oh yeah 10 years from now but oh well 
All right, guys, that was that review. And now we've got episode 15, uh, Man's Best Friend, if I'm correct. And this is the one where Dean is able to talk to dogs. Give you guys his thoughts about that episode. I'll read those off in the next review. Until then, guys, I hope you enjoyed this video. If you did, leave a like. And if you're interested more, subscribe. Final nine, guys. Counting down. Very interested to see what comes on our way and interested to see what you guys have to say. But until then, see you guys next time.